cái gì em à, à, Bên chị thì có thịt rừng à, Nhà chị bây giờ thì có nhím ừ. Có heo rừng ừ. Có nai Không biết hình như chim rừng Hình như có chim rừng nữa We're almost to lose pangolins, slow lorises. We hardly ever see them now. Those two species could be just on the verge. The bird, the population, just, but even gibbons, primates, they've been just decimated. I don't know where to go find that now. I don't know where I can go where I can have that experience again. In September, my colleague Mark Chong and I, along with our reporting partner Anton Delgado from the Southeast Asia Globe, visited Vietnam and Cambodia to find out if the COVID-19 pandemic, which likely originated in a wildlife market, had any effect in reducing demand for wild animals from the region's forests. We soon found out that little had changed. Cái nhím đó có giống cái nhím mà có mấy người nuôi á chị? Không, nhím là nhím rừng không phải nhím nuôi em ạ. Wild meat was openly sold at markets and restaurants in Vietnamese cities like Ho Chi Minh City. A phone call to a number we got via Facebook was also all it took to have wild boar, deer and porcupine meat delivered to us in Buôn Ma Thuot in the Vietnamese highlands. The surprising ease with which we could get our hands on bush meat underlined the alarming rate at which animals were being caught. In neighbouring Cambodia, we saw the traps used to catch these animals firsthand. We're here in Phnom Thanh Out Wildlife Sanctuary in Cambodia's Previhir province. After two hours of uh, trekking through dense forest and in the rain, we came across our first nang. Um, as you can see, there's also an attempt to camouflage the rope uh, with leaves. We soon found at least 10 more snares all within 100 meters of the first one. They were made of cheap material like twine and twigs and could be set easily. When animals like birds, boars, civets and even pangolins walk into the traps, they can be stuck for days. Leading us on the snare patrol was Ben Davis, who founded Bee Trade Adventures, an ecotourism lodge located in a wildlife sanctuary in northern Cambodia. A passionate advocate of wildlife conservation, Ben conducts patrols with rangers from the local community to remove snares. Ben says the poaching has become so rampant that he and his team of rangers have made a last-ditch effort to save the wildlife of Phnom Thanh Out by building a ditch, now 17 kilometers long and about 2.5 meters deep around the core area of the sanctuary. He believes this may help prevent animals from venturing closer to human communities where they are easier to trap. The best way to um, you know, save the animals from getting caught in snares or shot is to put them inside a fence or something. So um, we haven't had too much problem with people setting snares inside the ditch. While the number of wild animals in the sanctuary has noticeably declined, they have not yet totally disappeared. Ben hopes the ditch could help prevent such an outcome. Outside the PA area, it's almost nothing left. I mean, literally, the people don't even set snares anymore. 20 years ago, everybody was out setting snares all through Preva here and catching stuff, you know, just tons and tons of wildlife every day. And nowadays, you go to the same villages and they say, no, nobody sets snares. There's nothing to snare, nothing left. Taking wild animals from their natural habitats also has an impact on the health of the forest. By removing the seed dispersers that are vital for plant growth, humanity could lose an ally against climate change in the long run. Nature provides communities in many developing countries with food and nutrition. But problems arise when animals are taken faster than they can reproduce. Commercial pressures are worsening the problem Tran Van Trong, the captive coordinator at Save Vietnam's Wildlife, a conservation group, told us why. When the local people uh, hunt the animals for themselves, like uh, just uh, a little bit amount of uh, the animals uh, from the forest. But uh, when the commercial reason, the local people want to earn more money, more money so they can go to forest more and hunt more the animals to sell, it make the forest more silenced. But across Southeast Asia, 
local communities are stepping up to protect the wildlife. We witnessed this firsthand at Safe Vietnam's Wildlife Rescue Facility, about a two-hour drive from Hanoi. Trong had made plans to visit the city for the weekend. However, he instead decided to join a rescue mission to save four ferret badgers from the dinner table. He has also come up with a rehabilitation plan for rescued animals to be released back into the wild where possible. Overall, the group has a strong focus on outreach and educational activities. In Cambodia, we also met a poacher who renounced his old ways to become a protector. ខ្ញុំបណ្ដើរឆ្កែអញ្ចឹងខ្ញុំការគិតខ្លួនខ្ញុំវាហើយបញ្ហាមួយថាបើខ្ញុំយកអារបស់នោះមកគ្រប់គ